In this video, we're going to get into the particulars on how to graph sine and cosine functions if the amplitude and the period is different, and how to identify what that is and calculate it. So let's just get right down to it. Okay, first, I've uh, got two grids here. We're going to graph this function up here, y equals sine 2x, and then y equals 2 cosine. 3x. And over here in the top corner, I have our formulas. And this is a generic formula. And we're going to actually expand on this as we work through this. But I want you to see that this part of the formula right here, this part sine, as we move through this, it can be replaced with cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, and we'll be using the same sort of process. So the A and the B will have similar meanings in both of those cases. Uh, and x and y are variables. x is the uh, the input, the independent variable, y is the dependent, the output. And uh, so we're going to use that formula. Next, in this formula, the amplitude in this formula is just simply given by whatever number A is. So the amplitude is A, simple enough. The period, and I'm using this Greek letter, this is the Greek letter tau. Um, I should just write it, this character is there. T-A-U, tau, Greek letter tau, is used to represent what the period is. So if you see me write this letter, I'm talking about the period. And that is 2 pi divided by whatever number b is. So let's quickly identify what these are. So if I go over here into this equation, I can see that the a is 3. And b is the number in front of x being multiplied is 2. And down here, a is 2 and b is 3. Well, I don't need to plug A into anything because A is the amplitude. So the amplitude here is 3 and the amplitude here is 2. But I do need to do this for B. So if I plug in the formula and I go tau is equal to 2 pi divided by B. In this case, that's 2 pi divided by 2. But 2 pi divided by 2, well, that's just pi. So tau is pi. And over here, I have 2 pi divided by, and b here is 3, so 2 pi divided by 3, and that doesn't reduce. 2 thirds does not reduce, so 2 pi over 3 does not reduce. Okay, so there we go. I've got my amplitude and my period for both equations. All right, now, the actual best way to uh, graph these accurately, clearly, and be able to identify the different features of them, it's actually to use those two things, amplitude and period, to create a scale that makes it easy to draw. And I'll show you exactly how this works out. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, count out one, uh, two, three, four tick marks. And on that fourth tick mark, I'm going to write my period. So my period here is pi. And then down here, I'm going to count out one, two, three, four, and my period here is 2 pi over 3. Okay. Next, I'm going to go the other way because I want to do that for equal good measure here, and the screen might be a little out of focus while I do so. This is going to be negative pi, and then let's go the other direction with this one. This is negative 2 pi over 3. Okay. Well, that means that this one here is halfway, so this would be pi over 2, which would make this one pi over 4. Likewise, halfway here would be pi over 3, because half of 2 pi is three pi, uh, just 1. So this would be pi over 3. And so uh, we don't need to identify all the marks, but that's what's happening. And here's what's nice about it, is if you split up the period into four sections, and we're going to look at the unit circle in just a second, section, second, uh, that makes it really easy to graph. So let's go over to that unit circle. So let me see if I can just swap this over. Here's the unit circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, where uh, we're going to go by quarters. So we're going to start at zero, then we're going to go up to pi over two where 90 degrees is, and then over to pi, that's where 180 is, and then down to three pi over two, that's where 270 degrees is, back to zero or 360 degrees or two pi and continue that cycle. So if I do that for sine, that's the y coordinate. That goes 0, then 1, then 0, then negative 1. So 0 is the middle, 1 is the top, then it goes back down to 0, and then it goes down to the bottom, a negative 1, and then it goes back to 0, up to the top, and so it has this cycle. So <clears throat> what I now need to identify, well, what is the top? And that's what the, what's the top, what's the bottom? That's what the amplitude is for. 
So let's go here. Let's go back here. My amplitude here was three, so I'm going to go up one, two, three, and I'm going to go down one, two, three. And here my amplitude is two, so I'm going to go up one, two, and down one, two. Okay. All right, now, here's the part where we, we have some differences between sine and cosine. Everything to this point is exactly the same. It's now when we go to graph, where do we start? And if we remember in the last video, sine started at the middle, it started at zero, and cosine started at its top, and then went to zero. So sine started in the middle, then went to its top, and then uh, uh, cosine started as top, went down to the middle. And that's every sort of quarter frame. Okay? And so since my period is pi, the quarter frame, if I start here in the middle, and then sine goes to its peak at the next quarter, which the peak is 3 because that's my amplitude, back to the middle, then down to the bottom, back to the middle. And I just repeat this cycle again and again and again. So there's the sine graph. Sine, again, starts in the middle, starts at zero, um, and then goes up, and then back to the middle, down, up. Cosine starts at its peak. Its peak is two, so I'm not starting here in the middle. I'm starting at the peak, and then it goes to the middle. Oh, and now so it's going, gone to the middle. Now I need to go down, and then back up, and then to the top. And this pattern, once you get it, is pretty simple. But it might take you a little bit, a little bit of time to wrap your head around it, and that's OK but you'll get there. And these are our two key patterns, sine and cosine, very similar, just it's about where they start and where they go next. It's a little bit different. And we'll do next week, we'll do some, uh, we'll start going into tangent and cotangent and cosecant and secant. Uh, but if you get this basic pattern here, you've got your a firm foundation for where we move ahead. All right, there you go. There's an introduction to graphing sine and cosine using the amplitude and the period. And next week, we'll do tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And then the week after that, we'll start talking about what happens when things shift around with vertical shift and phase shift. See you then.